I coined the term work in as opposed to work out. Oh so, yeah, I did too. I didn't even know oh, you even knew that. Well, you did, did you? Yeah, it's in my book, How Do You Move and Be Healthy? I, I, you know, I wrote that book and um, I published it in 2004. And that's where I shared the work in concept. But uh, I, I was writing it for three years. But I studied with Master Fong Ha because I was trying to find a way to get people to understand the importance of cultivating life force energy instead of burning themselves out with exercise all the time. As I've been saying for a long, long time, because as you probably well know, I'm very involved in nutrition, but very, very holistic, not, not chemicals and not formulas and things like that, the science of the soil up. And I've been lecturing on the fact that we have an, we, we've been having a problem with fit, sick people, you know? Mm -hmm. And I coined the term the fit sick person probably 25 years ago and said, just because you look good in the mirror doesn't mean you're healthy on the inside. And uh, so I think that's very important. I'd, I'd love to hear just a, a sort of an encapsulation of your philosophy towards fitness training. I mean, obviously, you're, you're, you're into nutrition and you're into fitness and it's your life. But if you had to give a statement of what your philosophy is, what would your philosophy towards fitness, training, exercise, and health as a general uh, way of relating it to somebody be? Well, thank you for that question. That's a wonderful question. And at 61 years old, been there, seen that, done that, done this, and when Bruce and I created our program, our nonprofit, one day to wellness, we really looked at what are people doing globally that's creating wellness. It's not going to the gym and working out for an hour. It's really living every moment the best that you can. And yes. that means feeling, uh, moving, uh, incorporating, just being. So I advocate moving throughout the day I coined the term work in as opposed to work out. Oh, so, yeah, I did too. I didn't even know oh, you even knew that. Well, you did, did you? Yeah, it's in my book, How Do You Move and Be Healthy? I, I, you know, I wrote that book and um, I published it in 2004. And that's where I shared the work in concept. But uh, I, I was writing it for three years. But I studied with Master Fong Ha because I was trying to find a way to get people to understand the importance of cultivating life force energy instead of burning themselves out with exercise all the time. So I spent time with a true master of Tai Chi, studied Tai Chi, got trained in medical Qigong, and I came up with the concept of working in, and I didn't even know you'd ever use that term. That's wild. Yep. So I, I lead a, a workshop at conferences called Creating the Work In. Because as a trainer, you can only meet with your students maybe two to three hours a week. Right. And then what do they do the rest of the time? And, and what happens is, is they get this licensing effect that we know what that is. It is, oh, I did a great thing. So now I can go out and do not such a great thing, right? Right, yeah. So I can go eat whatever I want. Mm -hmm. And if we as the trainer don't instill, this was a great start. But what you do now going forward with the rest of your day makes a huge difference. So I have these, uh, I have a pack of cards called uh, Seeds of Change cards. And it's just a card for your you to use if you can't think of something, but I also mm. want you to create yourself. Right. Um, just things that you can instill in your students when you are with them. And so you start with a question at the beginning of the class and it could be something like as easy as, hey, did you bring your water bottle, right? Mm. And a few times during the class, you just drop a little seed of information about water, right? Yes. Or about a nutritional study or whatever. And you're not going out of your lane of practice, your scope of practice. You're staying within. You're just saying, citing a research study or posing a question. And then at the end of the class, you say, you know what? We're going to have a challenge. 
I want us all to drink a little more water throughout our time until I see you next time. And I want you to look and see if that really changes the game for your maybe thoughtfulness or maybe your energy level or whatever it is. So that's just an example of little things that we can do. But my philosophy really is move more, be not be idle from the mind or the body perspective and be conscientious of your actions and your deeds. It's not just about working out, but it's working in being mindful. Yes, that's beautiful. How have your consumer and professional views, attitudes and trends, or how have you seen consumer and professional views, attitudes and trends changed or not changed over the time you've been in the industry? Because you and I have both been in the industry a long time. And what I didn't sell you, and you probably don't know, is I actually entered into this industry by being an aerobics instructor as well. Oh, I think I knew that. Yes. Yeah. It was like when I was a kid, I was actually a fighter. I was a boxer, but I kept going to this gym where they had aerobics because it was great conditioning for my boxing. And the quite often the instructor would just not show up. So I would just take the class over and then they, they finally just said, well, you know, you can teach this. Why don't you just keep teaching it? And so I, that was my kind of my entry into actually teaching fitness was, was an aerobics studio. But because we've both been around for a long time, I mean, I've been practicing professionally since uh, January 1984 as a as a a professional. I started off as the trainer of the army boxing team, but my point is, is that we've both been around to see a lot of things come and go. I'm just curious what your views are on how have trends changed over time. And I'm curious, um, where do you think we're at now and where do you think we're going? Which was actually my next question, but you can sort of package it what have you seen come and go and, and where are we now and where are we going? Everything comes and goes and comes back again. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So in, in trends in fitness and gyms, you're going to see step aerobics maybe come back. Not as big, but maybe come back. Zumba was huge and, and now dance-based fitness is maybe making a comeback, but in a different way. So everything in some form or fashion comes back. Yes. What has changed, though, from the pandemic? See, pre-pandemic, we were very much, uh, in the United States especially, into boutiques, uh, uh -huh. going to boutique gyms, uh, many, many people like that. The big box gym was not quite as popular as more the specialized, but people were getting things online somewhat, but now it is an influx. So now yeah. you're seeing big companies are putting a lot of money, um, Apple and uh, Amazon. And I, I work for a company called Silver and Fit, which is the active aging market. And we have a whole slew of fitness videos that are online. So people yeah. are more comfortable being online. And so from that perspective, we are definitely, we've got hybrids coming on, especially with conferences too. Conferences now are not fully back into um, the mode that they were pre-pandemic. Mm -hmm. I think that we're going to continue to see that, uh, that there are options for people. It's much easier for somebody to wake up, not have to put on a, a fitness outfit and go right in front of their computer uh, and do a workout. Yeah. Now, on the flip side there is a, a huge number of people that need that in-person experience. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have to. That's like concerts will never go away. Yes. Concert experience, that, that just life-changing aspect of being motivated by someone else in person. Yes. Something pretty incredible. And because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. there, we need that even more now than ever before. We need that contact, that physical contact. Uh, so so I, I think where we are going is definitely a hybrid thereof. There are people that never thought they would be online that are now online. There are people that never thought they wanted to go to a gym, but because of the isolation, now they do. Yes. But they're also, there's a younger generation that's coming up, and I'll talk specifically about the fitness industry, that it, 
And this pains me, but they're not learning how to teach. Right. There's so many, there's so many pre-programmed choreography opportunities like Les Mills. And it's not, I'm not saying that I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying that I, I would love to be able to be in front of a group of people. And this is why I teach at conferences because I want to teach people how to teach. Right. Not just teach people how to follow me, right. but teach people how to think for themselves and create for themselves. Yes. And that, that I don't want us to lose that. But I think that with some of the things that we are offering out there in the fitness industry now, we are losing that sense of creativity. 